Good morning, church. This should be uh, easy for me because I'm usually on stage, but I have like, you know, wood and drums in front of me, so it's very nerve wracking still. Um, when I was asked to share my testimony, uh, the first thing that came to my mind was a song that I used to listen to a lot when I was younger. Uh, it was a, a song called My Story by a rapper named The Truth. Uh, in it, he talks about feeling that his testimony uh, wasn't as strong or as dramatic as some of the people around him who had been restored from living lives filled with like drug abuse and, and gang violence. Um, and I can relate to this song um, a lot because I felt my life uh, was very similar to him in my upbringing. Um, I, my, I essentially grew up in what is known as in Broward Church as a kingdom kid. My parents were both Christian by the time I was six, and they made sure to instill in me Christian morals and values. Uh, for the first, th the first time I remember being aware of Jesus, of who Jesus is, was uh, New Year's Eve of 1999. Uh, for those of you who don't remember, uh, there was a lot of people saying that the world was going to end in the year 2000. Uh, so as an eight-year-old kid, I was petrified. Uh, the world was counting down the minutes for the new year, and I was bawling. I was crying and, and telling my mom, Mom, I don't want to die. I don't want to go to hell. And in her efforts to comfort me, uh, she told me all I had to do was uh, say a prayer that asked for forgiveness and let Jesus into my life. Um, and so that's what it did, and it gave me peace. Uh, spoiler alert, the world didn't end, by the way. Uh, sometime later, uh, my parents felt led to start a church um, out in California, and that's where I started playing the drums and really helped my parents uh, with anything that they needed for their ministry. And that was pretty much my life for the course of over a decade uh, until I got married and left California in 2018. One thing I've learned is God is always working, and that the command that Paul gave the Corinthians to be on guard, stand firm in faith, be courageous and to be strong is a lot harder than sometimes we think. I had always known pornography was bad. When I was around 11 or 12 years old, my mom called me into our living room where our computer was and she showed me the history from our browser. I remember wanting to sink into the floor and had the horrendous sensation of guilt that came over me. My mother reprimanded me, told me not to do it again, but little did we both know the grip that this sin uh, would have on my life. This would be something that I would deal with in secrecy for a large part of my teenage years and adulthood. I would wrestle with feelings of guilt, rejection, and feeling like a fraud. If you were to ask the average church member of, of the church I grew up in, they would probably tell you that I was a good Christian boy. But I don't think anyone knew how this sin was eating me alive. I wanted to tell someone, anyone, but I felt that my image would be ruined on top of having to deal with the embarrassment. Then came the power of confession. James 5.16 tells us about the healing that comes from confessing our sins to one another. I prayed that God would give me the courage to expose this sin so that it would no longer be a stronghold over my life. As I got older, God began putting men in my life um, that I admire and I respected, while at the same time they would share with me how they also struggled with lust or pornography. To my surprise, this didn't make me respect them any less. It actually did the opposite, and it even inspired me to start being more open about my own struggle and exposing it whenever I could. The fairy tale ending would be that I've never had the need or I've never been tempted to, uh, you know, have that feeling anymore and nothing will make me happier. But the reality is that we've been tasked to guard our heart and standing firm in faith, which brings me to the second part of my testimony. As a freshman in college, I was exposed to different religions and thought patterns, which caused me to question my faith. After some wrestling with my thoughts and God, I was proud to say that I came victorious, came out victorious. I would say things like, I believe in Jesus even if my parents don't anymore. I thought that would be the last time I questioned God 
or the work that he did in my life. I had no idea what the effects of leaving California and the spiritual community that raised me would have on me. I met people who professed Christianity, but thought it was okay to do things that I had considered sinful. Yet, they seem to have deep knowledge of biblical views. Surprisingly, this caught, caused me to start doing things I had not really done as a young adult, like smoke weed and entertain other philosophies about God. In the wake of everyone deconstructing or reinterpreting the Bible, I found myself going down a similar path. I began to wrestle with my faith again, but it wasn't like I, what I had encountered in college. I had doubts about church traditions and if the church model in the 20th century is what Jesus had intended. Could there be more than one way to God? What denomination was right? Why did it feel like there was a political agenda tied to Western Christianity? All these questions surrounded my mind. I got so close through throwing, to, to throwing it all away and crossing a line that in my younger years, I said I would be incapable of crossing. Despite my struggle, I kept looking for God in any way that I could. My wife and I had been looking for churches for over a year, but none seemed to be doing things right. Then one dejected Sunday, pulled out my phone again and searched for another church for us to check out. And Broward Church popped up at the top of my list, which is kind of crazy because I live in Coral Springs and this is like a 30 minute drive. So I was looking for something local, but God knows what he was doing. I had never seen this church in the past and told my wife we should give it a try. We were met by Derek Jean on the Usher team, and his heart felt so genuine and welcoming that to this day, I say it's one of the reasons why we came back. The church was diverse, not only in race, but in, but in age, and no one seemed to uh, want to leave after the service. Uh, I hadn't seen that in a long time. God slowly began to surround me, uh, surround us with people that would make a lasting impact and help start steer me back on the path of faith. After studying the Bible with Jason and Tuan, I made the decision to make Jesus Lord of my life and get baptized. Again, the fairy tale ending would be that after my baptism, I've never once doubted. But it's become very clear to me that I am a work in progress and that we are not meant to do this life alone. Standing firm in your faith isn't easy, but I can't stress the importance of being transparent confessing your sins, and letting your brothers and sisters hold you up when you feel like you're losing balance. I'm grateful that God kept me and that I'm still here. Like Tony mentioned last week, we cannot avoid the pain, but if we choose to trust God through it, this life will be much more fulfilling and purposeful. I leave you with the lyrics from that song that still resonate in my life. Don't worry, I'm not gonna rap them. Um, <laughs> The lyrics, the lyrics say, I ain't got no horror story. God kept me in my youth. I give him all the glory.